All right, good morning, Tucka Siege. That's actually pretty good. Y'all impressing me this morning. If you're just now joining with us today, this is your first day ever here. My name is Jason Marlowe, and I am the pastor here at Tucka Siege, and we are excited to have you with us. Um, we try to get around and try to make sure we shake everybody's hand and say hello to everybody, but if I didn't get a chance to say that to you yet, we'd be at the back after church, and I will shake and your hand and hug your neck. Shake your neck and hug your hand. That just gets weird, right? Um, just as we get ready to go today, obviously Chris had talked about it, and, and we do as a family. Um, my mother and I both, and, and, and Emily and Steve, we all appreciate and have been overwhelmed by the um, love of the church, right, being poured out on us during this time. So I just want to first and foremost start off by saying thank you for, for that. And um, if I'm off more than usual, right, um, you, you understand why, and I appreciate your prayers as we go through today and get started this morning. So without further ado, let's break into God's Word this morning and get started in our series. We are continuing through Jesus Is. We're working our way through the seven emphatic I Am statements that Christ makes, and John uh, kind of records for us in his gospel these statements. And it's very important for us when we look at these uh, kind of two different ways. You know, why did God, or why did Jesus say this, and what's this mean to the people he's talking to there, right? And we like to look at stuff really, why is this important? Important for us, right? What's the impact that Jesus' statement has for us? Because Jesus is trying to show us not what he can do for us, right? Through this series, we're learning that Jesus is trying to reveal to us and show us what he wants to be for us. And, and when we realize who he is for us and what he has done for us, how does that shape how we live? How does that gospel message, right, shape? Our everyday lives, the ins and the outs and the comings and the goings. What's that look like for us? And so today we're going to look at the fourth statement that Jesus makes, this I am statement. And it's still in the same context. If you remember last week where he talked about the fact that Jesus said, I am the gate. And he's going to stay in the same conversation. He's going to change it up a little bit, but stay in the same kind of metaphor, right? And he's going to take it a little bit further. And today we're going to talk about this fact that Jesus is the good shepherd. So if you have your Bibles and you will, please turn to John chapter 10. And we're going to get right into our scripture this morning and start making our way through this statement. John chapter 10, and we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 15. They're there in your uh, bulletins and the handouts, and uh, we'll read it together there. There's a Bible's... Um, in your pews. If you don't have a Bible, there's these little paperback Bibles there for you. And, and if you don't have a Bible, we do want you to take those home. All right, take those home with you. That's your Bible. We, we got them to be given away. So if you need one, take one. If you got one and you don't need it, leave it. You need it. Don't leave it. All right, let's stand. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks in the flock and it scatters it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. And the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father... And I lay down my life for the sheep. Let's pray. God, Lord, just we love you so much. I am so thankful, more importantly, for the love that you have for us. God, I am thankful for the words of encouragement that you have for us through your scripture today. God, I just pray that through the ramblings of, of me, you shall be glorified. Your word honored. Your word taught. God, I pray that you would take away the distractions that we have, that we bring in here through our own lives. Lord, that we could have this moment with you, Lord, with eyes that see and ears that hear, and a heart that is ready to accept what you have for us. And it's in Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And so Jesus makes this statement, I am the good shepherd. 
And, and, and this is, when you start looking at this, and we start thinking about, remember, who Jesus is talking to, where he's at, and, and really thinking about who his, his audience was. And, and for them, you know, this idea of a shepherd, right, they, this was common to them. It was a common thought. They understood what a shepherd was. And in the ancient Near East and in the Middle East and, and these, you know, rural areas, right, this was a big deal. This was an important part. It was an important job. Nobody wanted to do the job. But it was an important job. It's kind of you think about early America, the farmers and people like that. that The job had to be done because it's provided food and everything else. But there's the few were the ones who actually were the farmers. And the shepherds at this time, right, provided very important thing. They provided the sheep, which provided a big economic boost, economic gains. It also had a spiritual thing, had a spiritual aspect to it because these sheep would be provided for the temple worship, for the sacrifice. So shepherds had very important roles. All right, and there was two types of shepherds. There were the shepherds who were kind of like the entrepreneur. They were over their own flocks, right? And they watched over their sheep, and they were completely invested in that. And then there were shepherds who were hired hands, right, who watched after somebody else's sheep, right, who watched after somebody else's sheep. And, and, you, and you know, and he starts talking about this, you know, there's a difference between the two, right? And we see first and foremost, when, when Jesus says, I am a shepherd, right, The good shepherd lays down his life. This was an obvious metaphor to them of his purpose. They understood because when you became a shepherd, the whole aspect of the job of being a shepherd was you denied your own life. You gave up your life for the sheep, right? They didn't like herd the sheep right in the town. They were all way out by themselves. They spent all their time by themselves with other shepherds out in the fields, out in the pastures, out in the hills, moving and, uh, and taking their sheep here and there. Nobody was around them. As a matter of fact, when they came to town, people still avoided them because when you hang out with sheep all the time, what do you smell like? Sheep, right? And, and if you've never had sheep and or uh, farm animals, right, around you all the time, you know, you don't necessarily like that smell, right? There's a big difference between, you know, me going up to my grandpa's farm and I'm like, oh, man, you smell that? That's, that's just brings back memories that's such a good smell to smell the animals in the farm and emily goes i smell cow manure (laughs) right the people in town they smell sheep right the shepherds you know that was that was familiar to them that was money right that's what it was but they were by themselves all the time so when jesus says the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep they got that right Because when you became a shepherd, that was your life. The sheep were your life. We talked last week about the gate. And and literally, the shepherds would would lay down in front of the corral and their gate, their life was the gate, right? And Jesus is taking this metaphor even further, saying, not only am I the gate, I am this good shepherd who cares about his sheep. This is a common Old Testament theme of God. We see it throughout the Bible. First and foremost, when you think about the Lord is our shepherd, Psalm 23, right? Psalm 23 gives this picture of what a good shepherd is. This idea when Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd, he's talking to Pharisees who have the Old Testament, the Pentateuch, and and the Psalms, and the Proverbs, and the, the wisdom books. They have it memorized. They spent their entire lives and spend their every day and every waking hour studying the Scripture. So when he starts using this metaphor to describe himself, they understand that he is assuming the deity of God, that he is taking this common Old Testament theme that we see throughout. Psalm 23. Also, I want to read some. This is from Ezekiel 34. I want you to hear. This is uh, the prophet speaking for God. God says, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them for all the places where they are scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will tend them in good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land and there they will feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. This is a common theme. Zechariah speaks of it again. Isaiah talks of this. Elijah, they all talk of God as the shepherd. So when Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd, it's clicking. Right? This metaphor, this example is not lost. You know, sometimes I tell a story and stuff, and it's lost on you guys, and I can tell because you look at me like, I don't know what you're talking about, right? Like right now, that was one. Good job. Way to play along. 
Jesus said this, and they knew what he was talking about, right? They knew he wasn't saying, I'm a shepherd, uh, you know, I got a bunch of... No, they knew exactly what he was talking about, right? And we see this because as this gets extrapolated out, as this chapter goes on, they get this, and they see what Jesus is trying to say about him, and they say, we need to stone this guy for blasphemy because he's saying that he is God, right? They, they start to understand this comes home, so this was not lost on them. I love the fact that Jesus always kind of uses this kind of compare and contrast analogy, Right? to his audience that he's talking to, to these, these Pharisees. And he says, you know, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand does not, right? He was talking to the Pharisees and he's like, y'all aren't really, y'all aren't vested in this. Y'all are hired hands. And what happens to the hired hands, right? You're, if you think about it, like those first jobs that you ever had, I'll never forget one of my, one of my first jobs in college. I was a I was a bouncer, right, at this club up in Western. Just, we'll talk one day. We'll, we'll have coffee. We'll sit and have conversations, and we'll talk all about Jay's life, all right? But I'll never forget, man, this one time, there was this huge brawl, and it was just, I mean, it was just terrible, right? I'll never forget sitting there at the end of the night, and, you know, we're hosing down the blood and all this stuff. I remember looking at that guy and going, dude, this is not worth minimum wage, Right, And I think, you know, we've all been at that place in our life where we've had that job and you're like, this just, nah. Right? You have those problems at work and people come up to you and start trying to do this and you're like, not in my pay grade, dude. Not in my pay grade. And Jesus is saying, you know, this is how the hired shepherds are. When everything goes crazy, they look around and they're like, hmm, nah. Not my thing. Now, let me get it to you a little bit better. In, in, in companies and stuff like that, companies have, are moving away from company credit cards, right? Because what happens is when people need something, they got the company credit card, what do they do? Well, I need this, so I just need to go get it, right? Because why? They don't think about it because it's not their money. It's the company's money, right? Companies are doing away with company credit cards, and they're saying, you buy it and submit your receipt to me, and then we'll look at it and reimburse you. Guess what happens to the people making purchases? They think a little harder now. Why? Because it's their money. Jesus is saying, these are my sheep. I am individually vested in each and every single one of these sheep. You know, you act like you care, but when it really comes down to it, you don't care as much as I care. He never even really disparages the Pharisees. He just tells them, guys, look, there's just no way you're going to love these sheep the way that I love them. No matter how much you love these sheep, right? He's talking to me. I'm a, I'm a hired shepherd, right? I work for the great shepherd. I'm just an under shepherd working for him. And he says, you're never going to love these people as much as you think you love them, as much as I love them. These are my sheep and I love them. And he kind of contrasts his ministry to that of the Pharisees and those people who are just chasing after it. And, and, and he says, look, I love my sheep. He, he says, as I know the father and the father knows me, so I know my sheep. Do you understand the intimacy that him and God, that the son and the father have? And he says, this is the intimacy, the intimate knowledge, right, of my sheep that I have. I am the good shepherd. If it comes down to it and when it comes time, I will lay down my life to protect the sheep. And he's saying that to us for today. And there is something important to be realized when we think about the fact that he is the good shepherd and what that means for us. And we go through and start to kind of unpack that for us. And we say, where is the gospel in the good shepherd? Right? Where is the gospel at in the good shepherd? And if you are one of those people who happens to be type A personality, when you see the slide and it says the gospel of the gate, you just raise your hand and have mercy on your pastor who has had a rough week. And just imagine that it says the gospel of the shepherd. What is the gospel for us when we look at it? What's this mean for us? First and foremost, I, I think about the fact that if he is the good shepherd and we're the sheep, we need a shepherd. Isaiah would say that we, like sheep, have all gone astray. God sent the good shepherd. God sent his son to go and gather his sheep. Earlier on in chapter 10, Jesus says that I call to my sheep and they hear my voice and they know my voice and they come to me. My sheep know me and I know my sheep. We need a shepherd in our lives. We need that person, right, to come and watch over us, to fulfill that, that, that duty that, that a shepherd has. When we look at it, we see that the shepherd has come to love, call, and protect us, right? 
And Jesus says, this is what I've come to do for you, and we need this in our lives. There's uh, kind of four things that, that I kind of found when I started studying shepherds, which is fun in itself, right? Shepherds protect, they heal, they save the lost sheep, and they love their sheep. And you start thinking, man, what better picture, right, is there of what Jesus Christ does for us? Of what God has sent his son to do for us. To love us and take care of us. To watch over us and protect us. To look for the evil. The shepherd is always out looking for the evil and guarding after them and seeing what's on the horizon. And trying to to move them and get them to follow him away from danger. To steer them away from danger. To protect them and watch over them. He he calls them to them when it's time to come into the pen. When it's time to to come in and and get healing, right? One of the things we talked about, the the, um, shepherd, when he stood at the gate, that he would look over each and every one of the sheep and make sure that he was okay and make sure that that the sheep didn't have any uh, worms or anything on them, right? Any bites that were going to get infected and that there was nothing that was going to hurt or kill this sheep before he even let it go. And that was one of the things that that was an important job of the shepherd. Loves his sheep. The 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm displays this type of love that a shepherd has. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me. And I think when we think about the shepherd, when we think about all that he does, we start to unpack what this is and what it is that the shepherd does. And, and more importantly, the biggest thing that I noticed when I studied about shepherds and when I studied about sheep and when I read this is that there is a process of love that goes on. A shepherd doesn't drive the flock. He leads it. Jesus isn't talking about a shepherd who gets out and stands by. I I was thinking about, you know, one of the first things I thought about when I thought about sheep and stuff like this, and and you probably think about it too because you probably heard it, and and I'd heard it, man, I probably even said it, is that sheep are dumb, right? And they need a shepherd because they're dumb. And, And what I discovered as I read about sheep, because yes, I studied sheep too. That's what we're talking about, so I studied it. Sheep are not dumb. They find out that sheep are actually really smart, that sheep are very smart. As a matter of fact, they have the ability to remember individual faces, right? Individual faces of other sheep that they recognize when other sheep are no longer in the flock, that they recognize and can come to recognize and even build up friendships and love within the, uh, with the shepherd, with the person who's over them. They recognize that voice. One of the things we talk about when we talk about the shepherd and the sheep recognizing their voices, they would turn these pens, right? These pens would be huge with like 10 and 15 different shepherds, sheep in there. And that individual shepherd could stand there and call his sheep and just his sheep would come out. And sheep are, are not as dumb as people thought, as, as I thought they were. And the thing about it is, is that they don't, it's not ignorance or blind obedience that sheep follow the shepherd. But it's the knowledge and trust about the safety and the healing and the love that the shepherd has for them. And I thought about that, that it's not because they're driving, right, the sheep. It's because he loved the sheep and the sheep follow him. Because they know there is safety in his voice. They know that there is forgiveness and healing in his voice. And that's the the cry that we have. And it's the love that we have. And it's the love that he has for us. To love the sheep is to share your life with the sheep. To earn their trust. And Jesus did this and does this for us. And we look and we think about it and we talk about this thing of what it looks like to be love and action and what it looks like for us to follow God. And Jesus laid down and, and gave us that example for all of us. I put in your notes, this is how we know what love is, that Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our life for our brothers. What does it look like to be a good shepherd? It's the example of what Jesus said. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life. And and it's funny, and this is true too, that the same word that they use for shepherd is the same word that they use for pastor, right? And so as I went through this and studied over this, it was more like preaching to myself, right? And sometimes we're, we hear the shepherd and we equate that to, you know, the pastor, which is, which is correct. But I think too, that we miss the, the flock that God gives us. 
right? And God has given me a great flock of, of folks here at, at Tucker Siege to be over. But guess what? He's given you a great flock of people to look over too, all right? Husbands and fathers, mothers, what you have with your children, right? Where you are at work, those people that are around you at work, right? That God has placed you among that sometimes we say, well, why am I here? And he's placed you there as a shepherd, an under shepherd, working for him, taking care of his sheep, loving his sheep, right? Showing the love of him to the other people, right? And, and, and some of you have way more, right? We have principals and teachers here and you have these great flocks, right, of crazy sheep that you have to rein in all the time. But it starts to really change your analogy when you think of yourself that God has appointed us all as shepherds, right? Not all of us are pastors, but I think we're all shepherds of the individual sheep that he has placed under our care. And the role for all of us, for each of us, is that we lay down our lives. One of the things that came to when I thought about this, and Jesus uses this analogy a lot of the shepherd, of of, of, of the sheep, for his followers, and I think about the lost sheep, right? It says the, the shepherd will leave the 99 for that one sheep. How important each and every sheep is, right? When, when you've got them all there, guess which one's the most important one? The one that's not there, the lost sheep. Which ones are the most important to us, those who are not there? A lot of times we get so caught up in church and say, well, I'm not getting this and I'm not getting that and I'm not here. And and sometimes I'm just like, do you know Jesus? This person doesn't, right? Why don't you help me minister to this person who doesn't know Christ? That's what it means to lay down your life, right, for the sheep. Uh, And sometimes too often we, we hear that phrase, lay down your life, and we think about it as death. And, 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 and I don't think that's the right analogy. I think it's harder to live for somebody than it is to die for somebody. Because to live for somebody, you have to die to yourself. And that's what the shepherd does. That's what Jesus did for us. He died to himself, left everything, right, that he had. Riches that you'll never understand, that I'll never understand, right? Left eternity, stepped into the here and now, right, and gave us the example, right? Humbled himself Paul would say in Philippians chapter 2, even to death on a cross, right? And yet we're not ready to humble ourselves that we might reach the lost, that we may reach the sheep that have gone away. I was thinking about the faith and trust and, and that a sheep has in, in, the, in the shepherd. And this love that they have, that, they don't, that they're not driven, that they are following the shepherd and there's a love and trust that's there and there is this phrase that kept coming to me and I've uh, it's just it's just be honest right it's just been it's been rough guys it's been very very difficult these past several weeks and months it's 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 a lot going on there's so much as a shepherd as you look out the flock there's so much pain in the sheep, there's so much struggles with surgeries and accidents and, and, and families and, and all of these different things and all this stuff that happens. And what I'm starting to figure out is that this is the norm, right? This is what Jesus sees every time. I'm starting to understand when Paul says, you know, I've been shipwrecked and I've been snake bitten and I've been stoned to the point of death and I've not had food and been naked. And he says all this stuff. And you're like, man, your life is not going well, right? And he says all these struggles that I have on top of all this we carry the burden of the church and i'm starting to understand the burden of the church is the burden of a shepherd and as i sat and and i just i could be honest you know i just had times where i just i threw my hands up and just sat and just prayed for for hours and as i sat and and prayed to god it was over and over i i came back to this to the same verse it's in it's in psalm and it's psalm i think it's 31 and I want to read this for you guys just because it ministered to me. And, and we're thinking about, and I don't know if it really has anything to do with sheep, but I don't care anymore. The psalmist writes, But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me. In your unfailing love. Verse 15 there, right? ESV says it this way. Into your hands I commit 
my spirit. And I spoke this yesterday at my grandmother's funeral, not for her funeral, but because it's something that's been on my heart over and over. And I think it really does kind of correlate to what we're talking about today, right? Because what you have is a good shepherd sheep who who stands before you with his hands wide open. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke, for my burden is light. And, and we're acting like stupid sheep, not smart sheep. We're carrying our burdens. We're letting ourselves go unhealed and un, 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 uncleaned. And we stay there. and We keep ignoring the shepherd saying, I got this. I can handle this. And I don't even think you care about me anyway. And the good shepherd sits there still with his hands open and says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And I thought about what does it mean to be a sheep in a very deeper way. And it really means that, right? Into your hands I commit my life. That's what it is to be a sheep. To commit your life into the hands of another, and to trust fully that they know better than you. To be a sheep is to truly and ultimately let go and let God. And and that's kind of what I figured out through this, that as much as this Jesus saying to me, I am the good shepherd, and getting out of what that means and the very... Um, you know, metaphorical meaning of shepherd and laying down your life and all of that. But above and beyond all that, it's this idea that you can trust me with your life because I have given my life for you. That you might not die, but that through him you might have everlasting life. And what I've started to find out is that the good shepherd reveals to us God's love in action. And it's God's love being portrayed to us. Romans 5, 8, I believe, says that in this God demonstrates his love, that while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Isaiah said again, all of us like sheep have gone astray. One of the reasons people think sheep are stupid is because when they get scared, they run around and then they regroup into their herd, their herd mentality really starts to, to come out in when they're frightened. And we look at that and we think they're stupid because they just run around and then come back and they get in their thing. But here's the thing. After sheep flee, they, they reform their group and band together for safety, right? They turn and form a circle with all their little heads sticking out, watching for the danger. Each one watching after the other. But here's the thing. Because we look at sheep and, and we think they're so fragile and they're so vulnerable Sheep are only vulnerable by themselves. Sheep are only vulnerable by themselves. When you isolate yourself from the church, when you isolate yourself from the herd, when you isolate yourself from the flock, you're placing yourself in danger. The only time the, the, the shepherd, the sheep has to worry about the wolves and the bears and the lions getting them is when they're not under the care of the shepherd. Why? Because the shepherd's going to lay down his life to protect them. And too many of us are sheep that have moved out of the fold. And you need to hear the shepherd saying today, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for you. the question for us becomes are we willing to lay down our life for him are you willing to truly say into your hand I commit my spirit I'm going to give it all over to you here it is right because I keep screwing this up right and there's one common factor in the the screw ups in my life and it's me right Maybe you're, maybe you're better than me, but every time I mess up, right, when I look at all the times in my life that it just got totally just jacked up, right, and I start trying to find the main cause, right, and I try to blame other people, and I try to blame circumstances and this or that or the other, guess who it always comes back to? It 
goes back to me. And I guarantee if you look at the source of your pain and your problems in your life, it comes back to you too. We all like sheep have gone astray and the shepherd says there, not only do I lay down my life for you, come to me. There's healing, there's hope, there's protection, there's love in the shepherd's arms. Maybe you didn't even know you was a sheep. I'm sorry about that, you a sheep. Bye. You're wandering around without a shepherd. And everything is going good right now, but only right now. Wolves are waiting to take you. Come to the shepherd today. Not me, but come to the good shepherd who laid down his life for you and for me. Because you're never going to understand the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. The peace of being in a, in a flock, in a, in, a, in, a, in a herd, in a family. You're never going to understand the love that God's revealed to you until you embrace Him fully and say, you know what? I'm done. Into your hands I commit my spirit. And let me tell you this. That's a daily thing. It's a daily dying to myself. Daily waking up and say, wherever he leads, I'll go. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No matter what happens today, no matter what happens when you shoot out of here and, and go out into the world, the good shepherd still stands. He still waits for you to show you his love. And he bids you come. Come and die that you may live. Come and believe. Come and see. Come and taste. Everybody stand. With every head bowed and every eye closed calls for Baptists and it's in the bylaws that we got to do that. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I want just, I want to pray for you and for me and for us. And we're just going to pray that the Holy Spirit moves because nothing's going to happen in here that He's not going to do. You're not going to be convinced or convicted by anything that I say. And if you feel that way right now, it's not me. It's God. He's talking to you. He's ripping at the thorns that are stuck in your sides. The hair that's been matted up from a life lived running from him. He bids you come. He bids me come and die that we may yet live. Heavenly Father, great shepherd, I'm so thankful for the love that you have for us too. Often we want to rush to tell you that we love you, but I think even greater is the fact that even before we said we love you, when I mean, we were at those darkest moments, that while we were still our furthest from you, you showed your love in this way that you laid down your life for us you are the good shepherd you are the great shepherd you are the gentle shepherd for our lives and I pray that we would know you today God I pray for us Lord because we have like sheep all gone astray in our own things Lord and I pray that whatever's in our lives right now whatever hurt pain anger lack of faith whatever it is in our life that is, that is separating us from you God that we would just give that over to you that you just stand there gently calling our names God I pray that we would hear your voice and that we would come God I, I'm not I don't mean to come to 
me or, or even to this church, but to come to you that they may know rest. Father, I pray for your peace, a peace that only comes from understanding that in you we find everything, that in you we find contentment, a peace that understands that in you we have everything and therefore we can do all things in you. I pray for each and every person that's here. God, you know their hearts. You know their struggles. You know their sorrow. And you know their joy. And I just pray, God, that right now that they would know you. That they would feel your presence in their life. That they would feel your presence in this place. That as they seek you, they would find you. I pray for us, God, that you would give us the strength to move forward to step out into faith and to say with the saints before us and the ones who will come after us, into your hand we commit our spirit. And Father, Lord, as we lift up this song of praise to you, as we come to this time of reflection and meditation, God, that you would just move and have your way as only you can. In Christ's holy and precious name, amen. To shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd. straight. 